Okay, welcome back. And we left off last video. A bit of a short video. An interlude between ending episodes, despite everything kind of being resolved in the first episode of the ending. The second episode is just sort of a... Uh, farewell, almost, between Mercury and Baldera. So the question here being... Mercury left Baldera a calling card to get in touch with them if Baldera needs it. By the end of the by the end of the final scene, does she use it? The survey says Pretty decisively she will. So Okay then, bet recorded. Bet, and the amount of chips you are betting. I'm not feeling less confident, so I'm gonna go. Yeah, excellent. Well then, see you at the end. Is this the end? I should actually save. Tap out. What does this mean? Ah. Uh. What time is it? Rolled over and checked my phone. Oh. Oh, well. One of the perks of being rich is that you don't really have to wake up at a reasonable time if you don't want to. Still, this was a bad pattern to slip into. It'd be for the best to get used to waking up at a consistent time. Normally I'd, normally I'd expect the light of day to try and help me wake up. But unfortunately, my curtain blocked that from happening. I should remember to open the curtain at night. Get it closed during the day because the sight from the window is pretty depressing. Just the brick wall of the nearby building. Huh? That's the price of living in a rundown apartment like this, I supposed. Was a little regretful. Being honest with myself that even after everything I went through, I was still living in a room like this. I didn't really mind it, but it was still saddening. What? But precautions come fir comes first the burning devil of ambition that drove people to not accept when enough is enough, but I was above that. Quite a bit of time had passed since my escapades in Panthea. Naturally, the hunt for me still raged on. At this point, large portions of the truth of those events had gotten out, and my prestige as some sort of master criminal had grown out of hand. That DNA sample the police had, police had was cross-referenced with samples of my work as the auto larcenist, and sure enough, they now knew my M.O., even still, that investigation was dead in the water. I knew how to erase my tracks. I had become somewhat familiar with fleeing to a new city and creating a new presence. My phony papers were fairly perfect, and my new disguise hardly resembled my past ones at all. As long as I laid low for a bit longer, I was golden. Which is why I found myself in a cruddy apartment like this. Give it another year or two. The heat would be low enough that I didn't have to be radio silent like this. And move once more under a new identity, craft a suitably plausible backstory, and live a lavish lifestyle. Meantime, I had been doing my due diligence. My stash of cash was all dirty, after all. So slowly and steady, I had been converting it to clean money, through a variety of clean methods. Considering the small fortune I had to work with, completely exchanging my savings for the clean version of that money would take quite a while. Like I said, I was going to be spending another two year or two laying low. I could do slow and steady. Fighting through the grogginess, I got out of bed and put on some clothes. I walked over to the fridge and took out some toaster waffles. Late for breakfast, sure, but I was getting my three square meals one way or another. Put the waffles in the toaster and sat in a nearby chair. My thoughts were returning to Panthea, as they were off to do in quiet moments. As of late, my life had been filled with quiet moments. I had to fight the urge to reach up over to my laptop and check up on how everybody had been holding up. I had done that enough. I knew that things had shaken out. Researching that shit every, every, every other day wasn't going to change anything. Perhaps the biggest outcome of my escapades was the dissolution of Olympo. Being honest, I didn't really expect an entire entity like Olympo to truly fall apart. I'd be in trouble, sure. Probably, not, probably a lot of the bigwigs would be screwed. But total collapse... No, the play with Chara shouldn't have brought it down. 
killer was Art. He didn't fight it. Neither did Polly, come to think of it. Odin, he sure as hell fought it. But neither of the brothers were in any position to try and keep Olympo together. Because of that, the dissolution went through. A lot of people lost their jobs. Panthea's entire economy sort of fell into shambles. From the ashes, a dozen new companies were formed. Dozens of local businesses received boosts. Things would reform, that I was sure of it. Now, would they reform in the exact same way? With so many similar conditions, with the core causes of Olympo unchanged, was Panthea doomed to bow down to a new Olympo? That remained to be seen. But at the very least, it was unlikely that the CEO of Olympo 2.0 would be in cahoots with the city's greatest gang leader and the governor. So I figured that at least had to be a step up. In turn, with the fall of with the fall of Olympo, the fate of the Dacema clan was somewhat all over the place. In keeping with his refusal to fight for Olympo, Art similarly refused to fight for himself when accusations of his misdeeds came out alongside the flood of other truths. Indeed, instead he humbly confessed to all charges. No, humbly implied a sense of grace. It was more of a defeated acceptance. Based on what I could see, it appeared Art had simply given up. He no longer had the will to fight for anything. He'd prefer not to. Was this repentance? I wouldn't call it that. It was surrender. Anyways, just like Art, Odin's refusal to give up on the company extended, extended to how he responded to allegations against himself. The man category, categorically denied all charges and lawyered up. It was interesting, looking at this series of events from the outside. It almost looked like Odin was squirming. Funny, in the past he always exuded an aura of control. There was the idea that he viewed life as a game with little consequence, that he'd be fine no matter what happened. And yet, now that his empire was falling around him, he seemed unwilling to accept that he lost. I could not but get some feeling of satisfaction from that. Despite all of his bluster, despite perhaps even convincing himself, Odin was not the mad king he fancied himself. And now that he took things seriously, the pain of having everything stripped of him would sting him even more. Because the man would most certainly accompany his son to jail. Hopefully. Both Art and Odin were out on bail, which perhaps shouldn't be a surprise. But given their relative notoriety, I doubt either would escape jail for long. The fate of Devon I had already witnessed with my own eyes. Which left Polly. Would he go the way of his brother, confessing and accepting his wrongdoings? Of course not. He too was not content to go down without a fight. However, unlike his father, he chose not to fight it legally, instead of amassing all the assets he could and going on the lam. In my eyes, this seemed a far more effective strategy. Sure, probably Dacema was a pretty high-profile figure. Common sense would dictate that it's only a matter of time that he was captured. The man had a lot of money to play with, and a lot of desperation to avoid facing the consequences of his actions. There was a distinct possibility that, like he had the rest of his life, Polly would avoid responsibility. But as someone who lived on the run, I knew more than the most that it was a lifestyle that few could handle. Me, I was fine with that sort of thing. But for Polly? It might be a fitting punishment in itself. Then there's Char. Technically, she was the CEO of Olympo, albeit for a few minutes at the longest. You think she would be a big deal coming out of this? So it's funny then that she disappeared in such a fashion. Yep, that's right. Not long after everything went down, Char went missing. She became radio silent on all her social media platforms. There's been no sightings of her, at least not that I can tell. She's just gone. That's concerning. Despite everything about me, I'm not actually not inclined to pin this on anything nefarious. I know, I know, it's a bit ironic coming from me. But I'm serious, I just don't get that vibe. Nobody should have been after her, not really. All the main players who could conceivably disappear at Char had much bigger things to deal with than her. No evidence of any foul play, according to some police reports I intercepted. In all likelihood, she probably just decided to make herself scarce for whatever reason. Off the top of my head, I could think of a half dozen explanations which felt plausible enough. Overall, my gut told me that this was a scenario of Occam's Razor. Not another JC. Still, the curious side of me would have liked to know exactly where she ended up. Limpa wasn't the only institution affected by my proverbial firebombing, of course. As above, so below. The Duats also collapsed after everything I did. Obviously. 
Civil War quickly broke out, which uh, did a lot of damage, not gonna lie. Eh. Bodies ended up littered all over, all over various streets. But, but not, not all bad news. The war was fought on numerous fronts. Many mem members were arrested, with the whole sorts of information getting leaked to police. Overall, the fight raged fiercely for a short time, with no clear signs. It was a whole mess of chaos, quickly moving before, beyond the scope of uh, simple Yi supporters versus Lara supporters. It really brought it to an end, besides just the fact that the organization only had so many people to be killed or arrested or to flee the city, was Baldera, chief of police. Understanding the gravity of the situation, she went semi-police state on Panthea, hiring many new recruits, conducting several raids, and having officers stationed all over the place. A bit too authoritarian for my taste, but be, being honest, but it did effectively shut things down. I get that you don't... I mean, yeah? Yeah? remember our conversation with her? I mean, I'm with you on uh, ACAB, but you did this. You did this to her. Like... You caused this, Mercury. Between the policing and the war, the duos are pretty much destroyed for good. So, you can't go complaining about her methods when you put her in that position. After things settled down, Baldera relaxed her force somewhat. See? There. Better. <clears throat> Still, given everything that had happened, the power vacuum left by the Duats actually has not been filled yet. Who knows? Maybe organized crime in Panthea is through. Like businesses, there doesn't have to be a prevailing gang. Plenty of cities are without them. But it was just too soon to make any confident guesses as to Panthea's future. I wasn't an optimist. When I reflected on the Duats, I couldn't help but picture Yi. Sensing the shifting tides, Yi remained a step ahead. He went to the police station and confessed himself, made Fang do so at the same time. Probably a smart move on his part. If he stayed on the outside for long, he likely would have been shot in the back of the head before too long. This way he could live to fight another day. The two were promptly thrown in jail and charged with a whole litany of crimes likely to lock him away for good. In theory, a just outcome. But I don't know. I felt a residual bit of anger welling up inside me. Pain. Lara. Yi, Marduk. All four were bad people, criminals in the truest sense. Yet out of those four, Yi was the one who came out of this alive. That didn't feel fair. It was a thoroughly irrational thought, I'd be first to admit it, but I had it all the same. Doubly so when you consider that I had the opportunity to rectify that. To kill Yi, just as I had Thane and Marduk. Eh. Logic dictated that this was the best outcome, so my personal feelings on the matter had to be shoved to the side. And who knows... He has made a lot of enemies, and Panthea's prison systems are far from perfect. Bastard was clever, and he had wisely brought Fang with him, but that could only get you so far. The perverse side of me had hoped that things would correct themselves naturally. But no matter what happened, it wasn't my concern. Of course, there were also political matters. The court date for both Aisha and Ariane had been set recently. It was sure to be a big deal. The odds that either would be found not guilty were very low, given everything that had come out. Aisha was a fighter, and there was a lot of chaos in Panthea. I knew more than anyone that chaos presented, presents opportunities to be clever. Even still, I was pretty confident that justice would win out in this instance. There were simply too many eyes on the trial. Meantime, Aisha and Ariane were imprisoned in the special wing of the prison, under the justification that they were unfit to be released into the general population. It might be true, but it also smelled to be like a clear case of preferential treatment coming from the warden. I hope somebody else remembered the connection between Aisha and Warden Pei. Yeah, <laughs> certainly. He's falling into the realms of conspiracy once again. Point was, Governor Aisha and Chief Ariane would face justice and spend the rest of their lives in prison for their crimes. That was justice. If it wasn't, I didn't know what was. Then moving on to Aisha's successor, poor Bach. He had only the, he had only the best intentions. Under normal circumstances, I bet he would have been a decent governor. But Panthea, as I previously mentioned, was going through a bit of a rough patch when he entered office. But then, just more and more, the truth came out, and the full scope of Bach's involvement with Aisha was brought to light. Well, that was the last straw. On top of everything else, this revelation brought ma 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 mass protests. Governor Underwood did the best he could, but his best wasn't enough. 
That's where the national government stepped in. Yeah, no, apparently dealing with threats inside Panthea was only half of Governor Aisha's job. For just as long as she spent dealing with her own city, she spent that much time keeping the nation out of it. it made sense, honestly. Honestly, it's surprising that I, had, that I hadn't considered this angle but sooner. So yeah, just catching on to how much of a general shit show Panthea had become, the nation had decided to step up and clean up. For Panthea became even more of an embarrassment to the country than it already was. Bach was taken out of office, and a representative from the national government was appointed as the temporary governor until a shock election could be held. Mm. Yeah, there's no way that this takes place in America. The whole thing was only vaguely constitutional. That had really stopped the national government in the past. Under the circumstances, nobody was really complaining. As for Bach, well, I hoped he would still land on his feet. Like a lot of the figures I met in Panthea, Mr. Underwood never struck me as the type with the skills to succeed no matter the situation. At the same time, most of the people who did strike me with that sort of impression either wound up dead or in jail. Whereas Bach had somewhat managed to so avoid serious repercussions at every turn. If I were the gambling type, which I was, I bet that he'd find a way to make, the, make it work. At the very least, his act of making Baldera chief of police had not been undone. Good, probably. Chief, Poli Chief of Police Vasquez had been doing her best to prevent the city from falling into total anarchy at a time where that seemed possible. To that end, she was successful. Honestly, though, that didn't really say a lot about how good a job she'd do. Contrary to popular belief, it wasn't too hard to be the head of the, head of the authorities at peak times of unrest. In my eyes, your real worth was revealed in how well you handled more subdued times. I hope Baldera will be up to the challenge. Why well, you knew better than most how power acts upon you just as much as you act upon it. In some ways, I regretted making Baldera chief of police. The last thing I wanted to see was to see her become the type of person I hated. If there was somebody who could resist that change and could actually help rebuild Panthea, well, Panthea, I trusted Baldera. To my surprise, she had actually used the number to try and get in contact with me. I didn't think she'd ever use it, certainly not this soon. I stood corrected. The voice message she claimed that she didn't want to be making the call in the first place, but she felt like she had to let me know something. Apparently, some weirdo woman with a purple streak in her hair had been asking around about me. I wanted to know if there was any way to get in touch. She'd been saying something about monkeys. Eh? To be honest, I was having a hard time following Baldera at this point. Obviously, I had no idea who this woman was, what she wanted. At some level, I had wondered if Baldera was just making the whole thing up as a pretense for calling this number. She ended the call with another plea to return and help fix things. Sorry, Baldera, but I had made my choice. Seth, meanwhile, was now off the force. It was inevitable. Too many people were present when he was added as a duat rat. The, the, the decision to keep him on couldn't have, been couldn't have been unanimous. It was only a matter of time for something to be leaked to the press. To help the force save face, Seth resigned himself was probably for the best. In some ways, the man should be thankful he wasn't going to jail for what he did. So many people had had were doing far less than he had. Instead, he seemed to content himself, spending the rest of his life working as a journalist. Yeah, that's right. A journalist. One with a bad reputation, too. Following in the steps of Cain, bizarrely enough. That said, I couldn't say I hated the choice. As already evidenced, the line between journalist and detective was more arbitrary than it might first appear. I wish Seth the best in his endeavors. And then there was Krish, the one person I should never have gotten involved with. And yet I'm glad I did. Following the burst, following the burst of chaos I created, Krish immediately got to work on that book of theirs. In stunning time, they finished it and sent it to the publishers. It was actually picked up. The book was released and sold decent numbers. In your face, ye. This was thanks to Krish leveraging their position in all this chaos to increase their own notoriety. Eh? Smart. The book was a fictional crime story, something of a thriller, but with a slight fantasy twist. I noticed uh, one of the characters bore a suspicious resemblance to me, and they weren't exactly portrayed in the greatest light. Fair. Fair enough. I purchased a copy of the book, and with a red pen I wrote all over it looking at my feedback and highlighting the positive points and proposing changes to some weaker points. Then I sent the book to Krish. 
Who knows if they'll, who knows if they'll ever they'll even get it? Much less read it. Much less appreciate it. Still, after I sent the book, I felt a sense of peace. I was glad I did it. At this point, my waffles had been ready for a while. And yet, instead of grabbing them, I stood up and began pacing. I liked to pace when I was lost in thought. It helped me to think. Panthea. A city of opportunity. The moniker couldn't be more accurate right now. The place was filled to the brim with potential. Yes, potential. Maybe I had changed nothing. Maybe out of the chaos a similar system would be formed. More corrupt politicians. More oppressive businesses. More senseless criminal violence. Certainly all of these things were possible. But I wasn't such a pessimist to think that they were inevitable. Some people like to say shit, like everything comes at a cost. Life is zero sum. I can't disagree more. It is brain dead logic to think that the things can't improve across the board. I'm not so naive to think Panthea could become the sort of utopia that Zahak and Cain thought it'd be. Creating heaven on earth is a fool's task. But all the same, I think change for the better was absolutely possible. Creating a better Panthea was absolutely possible. Now, would that happen? That was up to the Pantheans. At the very least, I had opened the door for them. Yeah. Yeah, I had done the right thing. I reached, over to, I reached over to a nearby desk and grabbed the coin off of it. I began to toss it between my two hands to give them something to do. Eh? Huh? Mine was now wandering back to the video, JC said. To me, as she presented. Why do they have to be mutually exclusive? It makes me different from the person I was. In the pit of my stomach, I knew the answer. But I refused to accept it. I was happy. I had won. I was rich, I had my revenge, I did good. What was there to be upset about? I should... There was absolutely no reason to be discontent. I might be honest when lies did the job better. My favorite teamwork when it was more efficient to work alone. I have compassion when my targets didn't deserve it. I stood behind my decisions. I, st I stood behind the person I was today. I was smart, I was athletic, I was charming. I could get what I wanted, and I had. So why? I stopped tossing the coin. It must, be, it must be because I was languishing in this apartment. When I, get to, when I got to enjoy my riches, then these thoughts would go away. No. What I needed was a goal. Not some bullshit like living a wealthy life, a real goal. That was the key. But what sort of goal would that even be? I found myself hearing Kane's words echo in my ears. That had been happening recently. This time Kane was repeating what he said about this country. About how all over, cities were corrupting themselves, upholding evils. As if the country itself was rotten. With all the free time I've had, on a whim, I looked into what he was talking about. Maybe because I had become so intimate with systems of corruption, it didn't take me long to see what Cain was talking about. He was right. I saw the telltale signs of secrets and sin being covered with a positive exterior in all sorts of cities. They were all different signs, sure, but different sorts of hidden problems, I'd imagine, but all the same, I saw them all over. How many Pantheas were there? What would stop them? Who could stop them? Well, there was at least one person with such a resume. I said I'd leave good enough alone, but still. I was a good person. As a good person, is it not your duty to step in and do a good? You see something wrong. It'd certainly be more fun than wasting away in a crummy apartment or fancy mansion and then stealing stolen money and sitting on my ass. Like JC said, I should be putting my skills to good use. Hell, like Baldera said. I think we build cities. Not my skill sets whatsoever. But tearing down bad ones? That was something I could get behind. Was this really a stupid idea? Probably. But should I go through with it? I couldn't say. Then I looked down to the coin in my hand. Everyone wants to claim as much power as they can. But there is a power higher than any man can acquire. Chance. I had made decisions for other people for too long. It was time that someone else, something else made a decision for me. So to retire on top? Or to put back on the masks? It's a gamble either way. But... Ah, don't you love a cliffhanger? I mean, it's not much of one. A woman with a purple streak in her hair, asking around about Mercury? I know what happened, as do you. But still, it's nice, just in the abstract sense. Well, first things first. To settle any lingering bets? For instance, you bet that Baldur would get in contact with Mercury by the end of the scene. Mercury hasn't, you know, actually gotten in contact with her. Well, Derry did use the card, so I'm counting it. Congratulations. 
but I have one more question for you. It's a big one, so listen up. Do you think this story had a happy ending? I don't remember what my bet was in the very beginning, but I don't, really. I don't think this was, that this was a happy ending. Kane defeated Limbo in shambles, the Duat shattered. It's a little rough around the edges, the city's a bit battered, but they'll heal. You really think the city's in a worse position than it started? Hmm, it's better. Okay, so there you have it. City saved, people saved. It's a happy ending, right? Or what? Are you one of those people who doesn't care about the outcome, just the means? Uh, it's getting into interesting discussion territory. Hmm. Then what the fuck? What's your problem? How is this possibly not a happy ending? Oh, I see. Mercury, right? It's Mercury. Do they think that Mercury is worse now than before with this story? Yeah? You think that just because Mercury had a bad ending, the whole story didn't have a happy ending? The whole save city means nothing. It's a lot, it's a lot. Fine then, I'll give it to you. The story didn't have a happy ending. Thus, you win the bet we made at the start of this and we'll be paid out. Congratulations. Okay then, well... You've had all the chances in the world to win ships. It's time for you to measure up, see how you've done. In the end, after everything is said and done, you've won. 453 chips, congratulations. This is the biggest number I've seen, but hey, it's something. It's not 503 chips, but who's counting? Hey, the main point is, it's time to go shopping. Hit it. The door's open for business. G All right. Ask easy, goodies, grab bag. Pack. Grab bag. Keep the shop door open. Look, I'll keep it straight. Why won't you leave my prize counter? That's it. My wares are no longer available for purchase. I hate to do it to you, but scarcity is why I keep my price what keeps my prices high. If you were to say, work over ten chips right now, I suppose I can make an exception and let you come back to the prize counter whenever you want. So interested in propping up the door, so to speak? Sure. Alrighty, you can come back any time you like. What's this? Now I understand that my little content of wits and wagers with this has been challenging. Some scrubs may have struggled to get as many chips as they wished. But I am a benevolent god, and I should, so I shall give you an offer. I shall let you make chips here. You're welcome. Of course, it can't be easy. Or else, what was the point of any of this? You can mine for chips, but the odds of successfully mining for chips will be slim. You can only mine a single chip at a time. Get ready to get to work. What? All right, how does this work? All right, picks up. Eyes and mine. Strike your pick. Mine. Let's see. Ah, dud. Shame. I'll try again. Sure. Fine. <laughs> It'd be really silly if this was a useless option. No. Good work. At ease. Alright. Lottery. If you like gambling. Who am I kidding? Look who I'm talking to. Of course you do. But you're too clever for me to let you win chips by gambles of skill. The real question is, do you want to gamble the chips you have on a complete lottery draw? Here's the deal, you pick how many chip, your chips you really, you want to pay me. I'm going to cap the betting limit at 25 chips, though, just in case. I'll privately pick a number from 1 to 10. Guess which number I picked. Guess right, I'll pay back 10 times what you put up. Passing an offer, eh? Interested? Sure, why not? You're putting up, put up, 3 chips. Great. I pick a number? Got it. Now guess a number. 3. Interesting. Sorry to say, that is completely incorrect. I guess two. Too bad, so sad. Can I say the odds were against you? Oh, a bummer. All right. True card names. It's a minor thing, but perhaps useful to some. Cards will regain their proper labels. Percy, this feels a bit pricey for what you're getting. 
Hey, maybe that's just because I've got the god mode view of it all, you know? True card names. I don't know what that means, but... Someone else wasn't even... Oh. It's working? Okay, excellent. Oh boy. We have to ration out our... Uh... Oh, that was weird. Just got a wicked headache. Let's forget about that. That's a lot going on here. Concept art, maybe, because there's some side characters. And whatnot. Ah. Soundtrack was good enough, good enough for what it was, but not a standout highlight here. Oh, done shopping? Okay, then. Well, then. Oops. Did not mean what is the mystery box? It's a mystery box. Is it worth 90 chips? Absolutely not. But you're such a sucker, you know you're gonna you're gonna buy it to know what it does. Why not? Okie dokie. You have your prize. Who knows if you notice it, but it's there. Got a mystery box. Corrupted data. Okay, I'm going to be honest. This is the equivalent of a pawn shop. They're trying to give you as many things to buy as possible. I'm that desperation to find products. I guess I'm going to sell some corrupted data I found while poking around. No idea what it is, but it looks like complete junk to me. In fact, it probably is complete junk. Make no assurances that it's worth anything. It's probably nothing. I'll sell it to you anyways. Or why not? I maybe you'll know what to do with it. What to know about me? My, my, my. The information that comes cheap, I must say. All right, then. 150, 150 chips, I'll give you a little taste of my story. We'll do it. Since someone awfully curious... Hmm. What can I do that won't give away too much, but just enough? Gotta keep some secrets to myself. Surely you can understand. Oh, I know. You know the game Two Truths, One Lie. I'll play that for you. Say three statements, and you have to guess which one is false. That seems fun, right? It's the game. There should be stakes. Too true. All right, then. If you do particularly well, I might just reward you with a super special bonus round. Let's get started. Round one. Let's start easy. My name is Easy. It's short for Ezra. My deepest, 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 dearest enemy has a name quite similar to mine. Now then, what's the lie? Ooh. I'm going to save scum. It's an easy. Sorry, sorry. Can't you guess? It's quite the coincidence. Well, well, well. Looks like we have a winner. Gold star for this premium name guesser. It's actually short for Esmeralda. What? I like the name Ezra better than Esmeralda. Me too. More fitting, especially in this context. Still, I like Easy the most. Or perhaps it's Ez. Hence why it's my name. All right, round two. Hmm. Well, I'm quite vain. Why don't I brag about my accomplishments? I was a gymnast growing up. I won a fairly prestigious award for outstanding accomplishments in the field of science. I've definitely killed more people than you. Where's the lie? Hmm. 
No gymnast? I was, if you'd believe it. Pretty good one, too. Hmm, it was a bright spot, spot growing up, I must say. Served me well, too. Not the actual gymnast skills, though those help, too, I suppose. But the real lesson was learning how to improve my own skills. Did you mean to fish, whatever? Huh. That's a goddamn travesty. Ooh. I kid. I was never a scientist. Are you kidding me? Ironic, I suppose, given our current situation. This is all 0% me. At least on the technical side of things. I'm more the artist. The auteur. The big picture sort, of, picture sort of lady, you know. I see the trees for the forest. Okay, round three. Time to bring in the big guns. Hmm. Suppose I'll tip my hand just a tad. Only because I like you so much. I have major plans for this nation of ours. Up in Panthea, in truth that was because of me, more or less. My monkeys lie in waiting, all around the country, in all sorts of positions, ready to strike. What I lie about. Weren't behind Panthea's downfall? Ah, oh, you caught me. No, as much as I'd like to claim the role of some shadowy puppet master, that's really not my style. The whole Panthe Panthea incident was a real spontaneous blip on the map. Fairly self-contained, I would say. We'll see the way things shook out. It probably helped them in the long run. I did learn I did learn of something truly valuable thanks to the show. So, I'm content. Hence why you're reaching out to Mercury now? Well then, that was three rounds. But you did quite well, didn't you? Three for three, very impressive. Ah, oh, what the hell. One more round on the house, in deference to your keen insight into my character. In deference to your powers over... powers of determination. I'll make it real special. When I was younger and far more crass, thoughtless. I used to carve easy into the tongues of my early projects. Oh. Stumbling onto the, te onto the technology responsible for powering and creating this whole experience was, well, something of a lucky break for me. And... You aren't the only one who appeared in that little recreation room I have in my... Let's call it care, why don't we? Because I care. So, what's the lie? You... Tongue thing? <laughs> oh, you're not going to tell me, are you? You're not going to tell me. Technology thing? Person thing. Yeah, you're not going to tell me. Sneaky. Sneaky. All right. Let's see. Zodiac Island. Zodiac Island. Final message for me. I think we have enough to do both of those. So hey, Themis. Final message for me? Final message, huh? Not particularly. Forty chips, I could come up with something. Uh, sure. Okay, time to come up with something. Well, I hope you liked it. That's not enough, I know, I know. That's really what I wanted to say. More than anything. This game was an experiment, really. I, I can feel that. I tried out a lot of different things in an attempt to see what I could do as a game creator. Some experiments worked, some didn't. Didn't realize that this would end up having a much more serious tone. Didn't think things would get half as political as it kind of did, I'll tell you that. Guess that's naive, though, considering that an election was literally a central premise. Didn't know at the start it'd have such a... I'll call it an ambiguous end. I'll call it something else, but I don't want to put my finger on the scale in any way. Writing really is an act of, act of discovery. Even if you ostensibly plan everything out from the start, things don't go to plan. The story develops as you write it. It comes naturally. Mostly. The Mercury twist didn't come naturally, I'll tell you that for damn sure. Dotting all my eyes and crossing my T's to keep that hidden while not having any inconsistencies in their thoughts or actions at any point. Tall order, I'll tell you that much. Maybe I'm getting off topic. Easy and I share a frightening amount of DNA. Not a good thing, as far as I'm concerned. Anyways, final message. Hope you had fun? No, that's not it. That's not right. I hope this is worth it for you. I hope it gives you things to think about. 
It certainly did. I know it has for me. Uh, what's up with the Zodiac Island? Zodiac Island, huh? That's a story. I want an eager to recount, if I'm being honest. But sure, I'll tell it. For a price. You interested? All right. The tale of the Zodiac Island. Okay, then. The Zodiac Island. So when I was creating the Zodiac Trial, I made my through I had something of a, you could call it a crisis of faith. Basically, my motivation to continue the project was so shot that I almost gave up completely. That wasn't the only reaction. I almost decided, fuck it. Taking this whole thing in a wildly different direction. To be clear, everything I'm about to say, I 100% actually thought about making. I just thought about it. I was excited for it. I made pl actual plans for this. Pretty detailed plans. And not for like a day. For a week, at least. The story of the Zodiac Island starts with Mouse being invited by her friend Ox on a vacation to a little known island. Ox, in turn, was invited by Rooster, who invited a number of people. See, the Zodiac Island took all the characters and kept their original personalities intact, but changed their roles completely. On this island, Mouse learns the myth of the local deity that had all these unique powers. Then she's approached by the god in a dream and given a rose. With the rose, there's like myths around it, is that if you should... If you should... Shove it under your pillow, then go to sleep. Next day, if you plucked the petal from this rose, you'd wake up back at the start of the day. Except the rose would be missing a petal. Mouse initially doesn't believe any of this, but tests it on, out on a whim on the second day. To her surprise, the rose works. Which is good, because the day following that, Ox is tragically killed and shot. In that order. Killed to death and then shot. So she uses this rose to unwind that to try and prevent it. The second time, Ox dies again too, and so does Bunny. That's the gimmick. For some reason, deaths are super common on this island. Incredibly high murder rate. Like, 900% murder rate. For some reason, deaths are super common on this island. Like, for some reason, people are really likely to die. Not just dogs or bunny. Everyone might get killed for reasons the mouse doesn't quite get. She and the player then use the rose to rewind and try and get through a day with no one dying. Every day you got through, there would be a big progression, and the game would have seven days total. Things would ramp up over the days. Fifth to the sixth day, there would be some real monkey route scenarios, with like ten deaths, or just mouse and dog alive. So who are the new characters of this new plot? Ox was the closest to this original version, acting as a prosecutor. Pig was a full-blown journalist. Remember, Pig was nice. Tiger was friends with Rooster, an Olympic athlete, basically the same character. The two were invited to this vacation by Rooster, an upcoming actor. Rooster invited Dragon, Horse, and Bunny. See, this was not haphazard. No. These four were actually part of a major drug trafficking operation called Chimera. Dragon was in charge of distribution, had a very similar character. Rooster's, in Rooster's independent film studio was used to launder money and handle finances. Damn. Horse was in charge of enforcement. That's a bodyguard to Bunny, who was in this version with a cop. Not a cop, but a scientist. In charge of making the truffles. Walter White. There's a bit more to that, but first, some of the other characters. Dog was the local cop. Sheep was the local librarian, also a friend of Monkey. Monkey lived on the island. It was Rooster's half-sister. Which is weird in the context of the Zodiac trial, but there's a reason for that we'll get to. Snake was an old local who ran a hot dog store. I miss Snake. Snake was cool. And importantly, was a historian for the myths related to the local deity. Looping back to Chimera, you might ask, why was Rooster being a prosecutor and a journalist, both of whom are against Chimera? Into a vacation with four other Chimera big shots? To kill them. Oh, oh. There's a thing with Rooster I had no desire to be in Chimera. He was blackmailed into it by the shadowy leader of Chimera, who discovered his secret. Rooster's secret involved embezzling his wealthy parents' fortune to finance his projects, but then his mother died. And then more drama, which gets far too bogged down in detail with this synopsis. The point is, Rooster figures out through more complicated reasoning that Bunny, the shadow ruler, shadowy ruler of Chimera, was blackmailing him and Dragon. Horse is on board legitimately. It's, horse just wants to... Yeah, not, the horse is just horse. Or it's acts as a bodyguard to Bunny this trip, but also a super bud. Yeah. It's a fun detail. Tiger's mother was hooked on the drug that Chimera produced, and everything went down, so there's that connection. So Tiger's backstory... fairly similar, similarly intact. Make a long and convoluted plan simple, Rooster was basically trying to instigate someone else to take the shot at Bunny, because he couldn't himself. Basically figured if he caused enough chaos, it'd blow up and result in a Bunny either getting killed or arrested. There's more to it than that, I think, but that's a simple way of putting it. Chaos he did cause. Brought the multiple possibilities. 
Across the days, almost everyone ends up killing someone at some point. But why? This whole scheme actually came from his loving sister, Monkey, for a nefarious reason. This time, Mouse has been learning about the local deity. And through her conversations with him, she has every night... She has every night when she sleeps, she slowly learns what this guy... That this guy actually sucks! She also learns with the help of Snake about this guy who seemingly went crazy and killed a bunch of people. Turns out those people were all people who kept the historical records of, the local, of this local deity. But super duper simple, this deity's presence was strengthened. The more people knew, who knew and believed in them, it's also strengthened by the presence of conflict and bloodshed on the island. It would appear before those facing down death. This deity would offer his powers to those facing this conflict, but usually ended up making a deal with the mark and fucking with him. Guy went crazy and killed a lot of people, did it to reduce the presence of this deity. Monkey who lived on this island all of her life, knew about the deity and wanted to have him regain her, his power. She figured she would use Rooster to cause a bunch of conflict, which might strengthen the deity enough for him to appear before someone. And then, belief would grow and grow, or until he could appear before Monkey. Monkey would plan on spreading the good word of the deity across the world, until the deity became a full-fledged living god, not constrained by the island. The seventh day final confrontation involves the road getting taken from a mouse by Monkey, and Monkey being empowered by the deity with some of his other powers set up before. Oh wow. I think he also like possessed the other characters and turned them against Mouse. And mouse won by like particularly disbelieving in the deity, like actively. <laughs> this sounds like an insane, disjointed nothing of a story, and that is because it's partly due to the half hearted, poorly paced way I described it. It's certainly insane. But I kinda love it. Mostly it was just a batshit concept I put far too much thought into. We're getting into like flower, sun, and rain levels of insane island shenanigans. Eventually I was able to take a step back and realize, oh, this sucks! Which point I probably scrapped all that brainstorming and vowed to not tell anyone about this frankly embarrassing plot I had cooked up until. Yeah. Then I decided, meh, sun cost fallacy and finished the zodiac trial. Probably the right choice. That said, it's not, though there weren't any concepts from the Zodiac Island worth salvaging. Conceptually, I actually really like the pseudo-AU versions of a lot of these characters. Like, hell, maybe, maybe, maybe you could spin the island concept into, like, a Your Time to Shine-related scenario with the Zodiac Trial characters. Like, take the Tiger and Rooster friendship. Those two don't interact nearly enough in the Zodiac Trial proper. In Zodiac Island, their friendship was going to be, like, a thing. Like a good thing, with an arc where a Tiger learns about Rooster's involvement in Chimera and everything. So I thought of a mystery idea that I think is actually pretty solid. Haven't had a chance to use it since, but I'm keeping it in my back pocket. No, for the most part, Zodiac Island was a trash fire of an idea that got fleshed out an embarrassing amount. Hey, it was worth 80 ships. 80 chips, that's something. D yeah, that was worth it. Importantly, what's next? Don't know why I'm letting you buy this question. Guess I'm desperate. 160, 160 chips, I'll talk for a bit. Sure, let's see. Gosh, how do I even approach this question? A lot of ways to take it. What's next with the characters? I thought Mercury did a good enough uh, where are they now segment. Aisha, Arya, and Yi, they're all in jail. Probably stay that way at least for a little bit. A uh, jails? Well, they're not infallible. Odin and Art will be joining that lot soon. You've probably seen the last of most of those people. Probably, for most. Rich is a writer now, that's good. Clean, happy ending there. Or dare the chief of police, take for that for what you will. Seth the reporter, cool, I guess. Fox been ousted, but he's also pretty lucky. He'll probably end up fine. He'll probably want to stay away from all this drama for the rest of his life, and he'd be wise to do so. Plot's on the run, Char's missing. What if those two might be related? Hmm. Both are deceptively clever, and neither have really stretched their legs in this story. Mercury? I'll let you figure out what happened with Mercury. The story of the divine deception is over. These lives aren't over, so who knows who might, who might show up in the future? On that note, what's next for me? Good question, honestly. Do I make another game? It's an actual question to, con to consider. Except probably not. Might take a little break to recharge some batteries, but making games is just too fun to not do. In a place in life where I can actually spend the time and resources to do just that. So I'd be a fool not to take advantage of that. In fact, I've already got some ideas for next project. Many games were fun, but I think gameplay could be a little less haphazard, a bit more tightened to the core of the experience. Like the choices of the Zodiac Trap, but they sort of also felt meaningless when you're doing dozens of different routes, racing the consequences of past choices. 
no, 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 no. I say I disagree. I strongly disagree. Let's just say I've got ideas. Ideas for the story side too. Pretty sure the location the next game is on is one that's already been mentioned in the mentioned in the Divine Deception. No promises. I no promises that any of this happening soon or ever. I never promise anything. I never bind me to nothing. Next for you. It's up, well, that's up for you. We'll say, between you and me, this game does have a secret or two lying around. Let's keep that on the down low. To make a long story short, the story EZ told was clearly laid out. The story I'm telling a bit less so, but the pieces are there. Or ignore all of that. It's not your thing. I won't take offense. Well, it's your oyster. Conclusion. What's next? Who knows? Isn't that the fun part? <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. All right. Oh. Back. That's something else. We've been through this. We don't have enough to answer that question. We'll just run through here. Who's the worst days, my sibling? Worst? Best? Well, those are some weighty words. I'm sure if you're interested, I can give my two cents. Why not? Let's see here. Best Daysma, worst Daysma, Daysma Ward, let's go. It's an interesting question, I'll give you that. The three aren't particularly anag analogous at all. Apples and oranges, those three. Take art, for starters. Most responsible of the three. I actually end up confessing to his crimes, as if that's anything. He has a strong dislike towards violence. Hesitate at the whole assassinating Polly thing. But uh, he did try to assassinate Polly, so I can't give him too much credit. End of the day, the Tyke takes after Odin too much. But he's not Odin. Forcing yourself into someone else's style is never a good idea. Polly's a child, pure and simple. Selfish, small-minded, petulant. Of the three, he shows the least growth. But hey, also, he never has someone killed. So, that's something. And Devin. Oh boy, Devin. Where'd you even start with him? You assign a lot of blame for his actions elsewhere. Then again, can't you do that for our Polly and Arch, too? He directly killed a lot of people. You're tempted to sympathize with him. I wonder how much of that is just because you saw it through his eyes. I don't know. Once he's getting into the morals of it all, is too murky. Personally, I find morality a thoroughly arbitrary subject. Useful for fun discussions, if little else. I'm a consequentialist. Devin ends up dying, so he's the worst days, but... Polly got away, so he's the best. I'll call it like that. Fair enough. Biggest villain, biggest hero. Interesting question, I suppose. I'll tell you my two cents for eighteen. First thing to do when you're asked a question is to define it clearly. Criteria and definitions are very important, you see. If we're going to consider the biggest villain as the person who ended up doing the most harm. The biggest hero, the one who prevented the most harm. That sounds fair. Yet suddenly I find myself faced with a quandary. Who gets credit for what? Let's say for the sake of argument I wanted to name Mercury as the biggest villain for burning down the city. I don't, but let's say I did. Should I then say Mercury is the biggest villain? Or would that fall on Kane's shoulders? After all, it was Kane's shenanigans that led directly to Mercury's actions. How far are we counting? The time traveler who killed maybe Hitler certainly wouldn't be considered a hero in his time. Causality and blame are such tricky concepts. All the same, I'm going to peg Mercury as this story's biggest villain. Okay. We're in agreement. Not for pruning down Panthea, no. That part was quite fun. But just leaving the rebel afterwards short-sighted. Because of that, Panthea was completely vulnerable, easily fell into the hands. Well, I shouldn't start blabbing about unrelated things, should I? I will admit it's my petty grudge talking here, but I'm sticking by it. However, when I think about who prevented the most harm, if Kane wasn't stopped, I have a pretty good prediction of what would have happened. I hate that idea, and I hate that idea even more. No one but Mercury could have taken down Kane in my humblest of opinions. And so I'm inclined to crown Mercury the biggest hero as well. Does that make any sense? Can someone be the biggest villain and the biggest hero at the same time? Sounds like a paradox. If they're doing what is a, might, what might be a net positive, for good reason. Or for, they're doing. 
I'm awfully fond of paradoxes. If they're doing something that's going to end up being a net positive for selfish reasons, then yes. I'm so, that I'm so that I'm sticking to my guns on this one. That makes sense. How would you approach Mercury's tax? Oh, I like this prompt. Take it, please. All right. Okay, okay. How would I? Have, how would I have approached Mercury's task? I'll say. I'll say from the start, I wouldn't have been able to pull off the multiple identity shtick. I'm not patient enough for that. And for the sake of argument, let us say that I'm doing all this on my lonesome. I just know what Mercury knows. Well, for the start, the power players of Panthea seem pretty obvious. The longer I'm around, the more likely it is that I'll be discovered. The longer I do nothing, the more power accumulates. Well, then I guess the play would be simple. Kill everyone at the top. Take all the familiar figures out. Someone's bound to make a move. I would have time for a long, drawn-out investigation, baiting a fiend like Cain out of hiding. Not sure I could pull it off, either. If I the Dacemas and the Duat senior officers all disappeared into the void one fine, void one fine night. He'd tip his hand. That's when I'd get him. Respectable. Ambitious. Insane. Biggest new thread? I mean, okay. I'll tell you for 36 chips. Alright, let's see. Loose threads, loose threads, loose threads. Even counts as a loose thread. Life is a series of loose threads that don't go anywhere and are eventually snipped. I really care about the lives of, the, of any of the individual pieces. Except for maybe Mercury's, that's the one exception. Other than that, personal loose threads are unremarkable. What I'd be more concerned about is what happens to Panthea after the fight. We love big flashy fights. They're flashy, after all. The truly shrewd stay away from anything that's too flashy. Too dangerous. They come in after the fact. Simply put, I'll say this. In most things, I agree with Mercury. One count, Baldera was right. Don't wipe out every single structure of power in an entire city and expect, and expect things to sort themselves out. Who do you think Bach was ousted due to public outcry? Hmm, it wasn't enough. So the, uh, the nation swooping in, quote-unquote, to take control. There's something more going on. Hmm. You, don't be, you really want me to spell it out for you? I mean, I will. For a price. Sure. Okay, if you say so. There's really not much to it. Panthea was a city of mortal gods. It really was that straightforward. I mentioned this before, but in my opinion, what takes something godlike has little to do with spirituality. It's all about power. The more power you have, the more godlike you become. And that has various perks. Also has various downsides. You know what really makes a myth? Beyond just its, just its historical value, that's part, that part's obvious. A myth, in my opinion, is a simple story that, at its core, strikes at fundamental truths. Often said story heavily features characters that have enough power that they may be likened unto gods. The myth shows how that power either makes the character or leads to their downfall. This was a simple story, one of a foreign god coming to a dangerous land and slaughtering the local deities until none remained. Can't get more myth-like than that, don't you think? Fair enough. Alright. We're done here. None shopping? Okay, then. Well, then. I suppose the burden of bringing this whole sordid affair to a close falls on me. That doesn't feel right. That's not fair. I mean, the natural conclusion of this whole story was back at that final coin flip. I just faded to black on that. Well, I think it would have been a very elegant wrap-up. Instead, you've got me here, muddying the pacing up. A bunch of nonsense. Sorry about that. There could be a sort of, uh, well, denouement. A final note after the final note. How about the final scene already served that function, thinking back to it? Hmm. It is a pickle. Because, sad as I am to say it, I don't have some final stinger lined up for you. No final piece of information. No particularly eloquent message. Really nothing more to offer. How could I bring this to a nice, clean close? Perhaps I'm choosing the wrong objective. But we need our ending to be simple and clean. Life rarely has those. More to the point, why should I care about your satisfaction? Honestly, I've gotten two in my own head about this. The natural ending has already happened. This... This is just a conversation between two friends. You are my friend, right? <laughs> Shh. 
sure. Of course. Of course you are. So then, as your friend, let me say this. You've been a wonderful, captive audience. Hope you enjoyed the story I've weaved for you. Now then, I'll leave you alone, for now. We come out of this soon enough. In the meantime, do what you please. I won't stop you. I will be busy in the meantime. It could very well be the last time I talk to you in this state. And so let me just say from the bottom of my heart. Only 453 chips. Ha! Huh. Loser. <laughs> you asshole. Oh, man. Well, this has been the Divine Deception. The uh, ending sequence. Honestly, a bit disappointing. Like, it definitely peaked during the first one, but it resolved itself during the first one. Like, there's no real. The rest of it is just the falling action afterwards, and that's a bit of a... Uh-oh. Is that an autosave? Corrupted data to the store. Whoa, what? of a mystery box somewhere. Just a... Curious about something. The true card names. Dead money. Punch. What does that mean? If we play that literally. Five six three three one three dash dot 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 means it's B in Morse code. Does that mean? Just curious if we I didn't actually have that purchased. All my rewinding. Big money. Eight of spades. Oh. Nullifying the cut. Two of spades. Dragon triplet. Three of hearts. If that is... Hmm. Tap out. Ace of spades. King of spades. Queen of spades. Ten of spades. Hmm. Curious. Now this, now this, this is something interesting, something powerful. We'll experience it all again from the start. We to pretend none of this stuff already happened. What the pure reset? Hmm. No reason to take this offer. We'll completely reset the game. Good. Need to lose you. I'll have to offer the narrator commentary.
<laughs> Eyes in mine. No. Oh, all right. Okay, not much more we can do here. There's no real way to get chips back. And this is uh, another matter entirely. We have two codes. We have two codes. Two pieces of QR of QR codes. And uh a punch and uh horse code B. Think of that what you will. Because in the end Final chapter Yeah. Pretty much, and he said, a bit of disappointing compared to Zodiac Trial, but sort of the tone that this story took throughout, I'm really not surprised. He perfectly real here. It's disappointing. It peaked early, and the rest was just sort of a like a two-part uh, exercise in uh, Mercury uh, surrender, surrendering to uh, villainy, and uh, or surrendering to uh, not good. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's disappointing, but I can't say it's bad. It's an ending that really fits the story told. Pretty real, like painfully real in a sense, if you of course, in that process, you have to accept the power, the uh, abilities of Mercury to be able to pull off such a con with several different uh, interwoven identities. Uh, in order to uh, sort of insert themselves into the inner workings of Panthea and tear it down from within. Like, that's really the only part that you have to accept as possible in all of this. But not that, not that hard of an ask. To be real. That's reasonable route to go through, I think. Beyond that, that's honestly quite re quite uh, legit. It's quite real, quite down to earth depiction of uh, really right grounded perception of just daily life in the, a city that's not a pleasant place to live. Pain of politics, the pain of uh, pain of politics. Just 
politics in general. Sticking your nose into politics. Sticking your nose into police, into the inner workings of police business. Addressing police corruption. corporate business world and their interactions with the police and uh, organized crime it's yeah very gritty very depressing very yeah the ending is uh very fitting for the story that you have told. I will give it that. In the end, Mercury is not a good person. I think that's been cemented to us. So... Also very clear that there's something else coming along the way here. And it's not necessarily it is very much tacked on to the very end of this, and I don't know how well we'll be able to get how much is hidden here. I don't know if I have to do uh full reset to be, uh, try and grind enough chips to uh, get the uh, who am I line that's the one uh, goal yet I've got for certain so figure out the who am I try and figure something out with the uh See if there's anything we can do with the corrupted data. It's got a mystery box somewhere too, apparently. That so? All right. For now, though, yeah, we're gonna sign off. This is the finale of the main story of the Divine Deception. Whatever comes next. We'll see. Till then, until then.